Hi everyone, this is Dr. Udrak Lectures. Today we'll be talking about the red blood cells. Red blood cells are the non-nucleated form elements in the blood. Red blood cells are also called erythrocytes. Red blood cells are actually red in color. The red color of the red blood cell is due to the presence of the coloring pigment called hemoglobin. Red blood cells play a significant role in the transport of respiratory gases. That is to say that they transport oxygen from the lungs to the various tissues and organs of the body and transports carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs. Red blood cells are larger in number compared to other cells, namely white blood cells and platelets. Red blood cell count ranges between 4 and 5.5 million per cubic millimeter of blood. In adult males, it is 5 million per cubic millimeter and in adult females, it is 4.5 million per cubic millimeter. The red blood cells are dick shaped and biconcave. The central portion is thinner and the periphery is thicker. The biconcave contour of red blood cell has some mechanical and functional advantages. The biconcave shape helps in the equal and rapid diffusion of oxygen and other substances to the interior of the cell. Because of the biconcave shape, while passing through minute capillaries, red blood cells squeeze through the capillaries very easily without getting damaged. The diameter of red blood cells is about 7.2 to 7.5 micron. Now, in terms of thickness, at the periphery, it is thicker with about 2.5 micron and at the center, it's about 1 micron. The difference in thickness is because of the biconcave shape of red blood cell. Red blood cell has a surface area of 120 square micron. And it has a volume of 80 to 90 cubic micron. Red blood cells are non-nucleated in nature. Because of the absence of nucleus in human red blood cell, the DNA is also absent. Other organelles such as mitochondria and Golgi apparatus are also absent in red blood cell. Now, because of the absence of mitochondria, the energy is produced from glycolytic process. Red blood cell does not have insulin receptor, and so the glucose uptake by this cell is not controlled by insulin. Red blood cell has a special type of cytoskeleton, which is made up of actin and spectrin. But the proteins are anchored to transmembrane proteins by means of another protein called the anchoring. Now, the absence of spectrin results in a condition known as ferrocytosis. In this condition, the cell is deformed, loses its biconcave shape and becomes globular. The spherocyte is very fragile and can easily rupture. Now, let us talk about the properties of red blood cells. Number one property is what we call the relox formation. When blood is taken out of the blood vessel, the red blood cells usually pile up one above another like the pile of coins. This property of red blood cells is called relox formation. It is accelerated by plasma proteins called globulin and fibrinogen. The specific gravity of red blood cell is between 1.092 to 1.101. Another property of red blood cell is what we call the packed cell volume. Packed cell volume is the proportion of blood occupied by red blood cells that is expressed in percentage. It is also called the hematocrit value. Usually it is 45% of the blood and plasma volume is usually 55%. Another property of red blood cell is what is called 
the suspension stability. Now, during circulation, the red blood cells remain suspended uniformly in the blood. This property of red blood cell is called the suspension stability. The average lifespan of red blood cell is about 120 days. After the lifetime, the center red blood cells are destroyed in the reticuloendothelial system. When the cells become senile, the cell membrane becomes more fragile. The diameter of the capillaries is less or equal to that of red blood cells. Younger red blood cells can pass through the capillaries easily. However, because of the fragile nature, the senile cells are destroyed while trying to squeeze through the capillaries. The destruction occurs mainly in the capillaries of the red pulp of the spleen because the diameter of splenic capillaries is very small. So the spleen is called the graveyard of red blood cells. Destroyed red blood cells are fragmented and hemoglobin is released from the fragmented part. Hemoglobin is immediately phagocytized by macrophages of the body, particularly the macrophages present in the liver, that is the coffer cells, spleen and bone marrow. Hemoglobin is degraded into iron, globin and porphyrin. Iron combines with a protein called apophyretin to form ferritin, which is stored in the body and reused later. Globulin enters the protein depot for later use. Porphyrin is degraded into bilirubin, which is excreted by the liver through bile. Now, let's talk about the functions of red blood cells. Number one is the transport of oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. Hemoglobin in red blood cells combines with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. Now, about 97% of oxygen is transported in blood in the form of oxyhemoglobin. Number two is the transport of carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs. Hemoglobin combines with carbon dioxide and form carboxyhemoglobin. About 30% of carbon dioxide is transported in this form. Now, red blood cells contain a large amount of the carbonic anhydrase. This enzyme is necessary for the formation of bicarbonates from water and carbon dioxide. Thus, it helps to transport carbon dioxide in the form of bicarbonates from the tissues to the lungs. Number three is the buffering action in blood. Hemoglobin functions as a good buffer. By this action, it regulates the hydrogen ion concentration and thereby plays a role in the maintenance of acid-base balance. Red blood cell is implicated in blood group determination. Red blood cells actually carry the blood group antigens like the A antigen, the B antigen, and the resource factor. This helps in the determination of blood group and enables to prevent reactions due to incompatible blood transfusion. Now, let's talk about the variations in the number of red blood cells. Number one, we have the physiological variation. Under physiological variation, we have an increase in red blood cell counts. Now, increase in the red blood cell count is known as polycythemia. Polycythemia occurs in both physiological and pathological conditions. When it occurs in physiological condition, it is called the physiological polycythemia. The increase in number of red blood cells during this condition is marginal and of course is temporary. It occurs in the following conditions. Number one, age. At best, the red blood cell count is 8 to 10 million per cubic millimeter of blood. The count decreases within 10 days after birth due to destruction of red blood cells causing physiological jaundice in some newborn babies. However, in infants and growing children, the cell count is more than the value in adults. Number two is sex. Before puberty and after menopause, the red blood cell count is similar to that in males. During the reproductive period of females, the count is less than that of females. That is, it reduces 
to 4.5 million per cubic millimeter. Number three is high altitude. Inhabitants of mountains that is above 10,000 feet from the mean sea level have an increased red blood cell count of more than 7 million per cubic millimeter. This is due to a condition known as hyposia in high altitude. Hyposia stimulates the kidney to secrete a hormone called erythropoietin. Erythropoietin in turn stimulates the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. Number four, muscular exercise. There is a temporary increase in red blood cell count after an exercise. Number five is emotional condition. Red blood cell count increases during the emotional condition such as anxiety. Number six is increased environmental temperature. Increase in atmospheric temperature increases red blood cell count. Number seven is after meals. There is a slight increase in red blood cell count after taking a meal. Now let's look at the conditions that bring about decrease in red blood cell count. Decrease in red blood cell count occurs in the following physiological condition. Number one, at high barometric pressures, as in deep sea, the oxygen tension of blood is higher. The red blood cell count usually decreases during this uh, condition. Number two is during sleep. Red blood cell count decreases slightly during sleep and immediately after getting off from sleep. Number three is pregnancy. During pregnancy, the red blood cell count decreases. It is because of the increase in the ECF volume. An increase in the ECF volume increases the plasma volume and also resulting in hemodilution. So there is a related reduction in the red blood cell count. Now, let's talk about the pathological variation of red blood cell. In this variation, we have a condition known as pathological polycythemia. Now, pathological polycythemia is the abnormal increase in the red blood cell count. Red blood cell count increases about 7 million cubic millimeter of blood. Now, polycythemia is of two types. We have the primary polycythemia and the secondary polycythemia. Primary polycythemia is otherwise called polycythemia vera. It is a disease condition that is characterized by persistent increase in red blood cell counts. And the increase is above 40 million per cubic millimeter of blood. The second one is secondary polycythemia. Secondary polycythemia is secondary to some of the pathological condition or to some underlying pathological conditions like respiratory disorders such as emphysema, chronic carbon monoxide poisoning, 